Hi right, everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS on Dead Island 2. Uh, it's running very well on PC, so we're going to start by optimizing Windows, and after that we'll go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance, and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottlenecks. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have a, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for example, here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for NVIDIA, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to Control Panel, open it, go to Manage 3D Setting, and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS, uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring, uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divided by two, so for me it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're gonna make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game, so let's go to display mode. We're gonna start with the resolution. Make sure that you're playing native. Uh, don't lower your resolution over there. Just play native depending on your monitor. Also make sure that you're playing in full screen. Uh, if you're playing borderless in this game, sometimes I was getting some random stuttering. So go with full screen. I'm not using V-Sync. I just want the lowest input lag possible. If you don't like those steering line uh, that appears when you don't use V-Sync, definitely activate your V-Sync. Also, you can use other technologies like uh, the G-Sync or the FreeSync from AMD. For maximum frame rate, I just play unlimited. Uh, I just want the maximum frame rate, the lowest input lag, but don't go too crazy with that. If you're struggling with your thermals, you're playing on a laptop or a desktop without too much fan, uh, you can have like st stuttering because uh, your CPU or GPU can throttle if you have uh, bad thermals. So super important, maybe lock your frame rate with the amount of Hertz that you have on your monitor if you're struggling with your, F uh, with your thermals. For field of view, I'm playing at 90. Really important to understand more field of view that you will add, uh, less FPS that you will have. Uh, you need to render more stuff in front of you. So don't go too crazy if you're struggling with your FPS with field of view. Motion blur, I'm going with zero. I want uh, no blurriness. The, I want uh, visibility. So that's why I'm playing at zero over there. We're going to go to advanced now. Uh, the first one is anti-aliasing. FXAA is a good compromise to save 5% in your FPS, and also honestly, the game looks better. It, I, it's better for the visibility. Uh, if you're using like temporal uh, AA low or even high, you will see that your game looks very blurry. So that's why I'm using the FX FX AA like very basic anti-aliasing. Uh, for view distance, huge impact on your FPS with ultra and high. So I recommend to go medium. It's the best compromise. Uh, low is very too. Uh, you will see too near in front of you. Uh, so medium is a good compromise, and you will save seven percent in your FPS. Post processing, I recommend to go with low and nice four percent boost in your FPS and a lot better visibility, less blurriness. Shadows, this is probably the parameter that will provide you the most of your FPS. If I compare ultra to low, you can expect 20% boost in your FPS. So if you just need pure FPS, just start with this parameter. Texture, if you have 6 gig and more of your RAM, go with ultra, cat 4 gig at high, 3 gig at medium, and less than 3 gig, go with low. After that, you have the effects. I recommend to go with medium with effects. Uh, it's still a single player, you know, you want some cool effects. I didn't see a big difference between low and medium in my FPS, but when you go at high and ultra, you will see that uh, you're getting some big drops in your FPS if you don't have a good computer. Foliage detail, pretty much the same thing. Go with medium, good compromise. Uh, not a huge difference between uh, low and, med uh, and medium. So I recommend to go with medium. If you go higher than that, you will see a, a, a biggest uh, decrease in your FPS. So that's why I recommend to go with medium. Same thing with ambient inclusion. At low, the game looks very flat. So I don't recommend to go with low. Uh, go with medium. You will have a good compromise between FPS and good image quality.
And Direct Shadow, I recommend to go with low. You can expect a nice 4% boost in your FPS. Screen Space Reflection, 5% boost at low, so really important. And Shading Quality, I recommend to go with medium, a nice 4% boost, and you will have a decent image quality. You have uh, Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2 in this game. I'm not a huge fan of it. I did some testing. Don't use Performance and Balance. They're... They're very too blurry. If you want to use it, you can use quality. You can expect 8 to 10% boost in your FPS. But I still feel like the game is blurry. I'm not a huge fan of it, so I deactivate it. And the variable shading, you can definitely go at on. You can expect 4 to 5% boost in your FPS, depending on where you are uh, in the map. So this is pretty much it for my guide for Dead Island 2. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.